Hello and welcome to another exciting installment of Deviance and Social Control. I'm your host, Danielle McCartney, and today we're going to talk about control theories. Let's get started. Social control theories of deviance got their start from early classical rational choice type theories, usually associated with Cesar Beccaria. These early theories in criminology believe that individuals are rational actors who make selfish choices, choices that benefit them, and that they have the free will to make such choices. Okay, so hold up just a second. A quick aside. The theory that drives much of the American criminal justice system, deterrence theory, was inspired by Beccaria. And Beccaria said that punishment could be used to deter crimes not only because it punishes the criminal, but because it also sends a message to other potential wrongdoers. Beccaria argued that for punishment to be an effective deterrent to crime, punishment must be swift, it must be certain, and it must be severe. In the U.S., we have certainly taken on the severe part. We have longer and more punitive sentences than most of the rest of the world. But our criminal justice system is not designed to administer punishment swiftly. We want to make sure we punish the right person. So we have a long process of evidence gathering, trials, and appeals. That means when punishment is finally administered, it is not swift, if it happens at all. Many people arrested for crimes can plead out. They can plead guilty to a lesser crime or for a lower sentence or for some other consideration. Punishment is also not certain. Although there are plenty of scripted crime TV shows showing that the cops always catch the bad guy, in real life, we don't have easy access to some kind of mass spectrometer that can analyze the DNA from saliva in gum stuck to the victim's shoe. And even if we did, it would take months to process. So yeah, not swift, not certain, but we've got severe down pat. Unfortunately, satisfying only one of these three components means that punishment won't work as a deterrent. Anyhow, okay, back to control theories. What control theories took from Beccaria is the notion that being free actors Individuals need controls in their lives to keep them from hedonistic, self-serving action, at least if that action is harmful to society. Control theorists assert that human beings are basically antisocial and assume that deviance is part of the natural order of society. Being selfish beings, we are motivated to deviate and to violate norms. Therefore, according to control theorists, because we're all motivated to be deviant, the question is not why do people deviate from norms, but why do we obey the rules at all? And control can come from inside us, so that is, it could be self-control or internal control, or control can come from outside us, so social control or external control. Our first theory of social control focuses specifically on those different kinds of internal or external controls. Like many criminologists, Ivan Nye studied juvenile delinquency to theorize about deviance and social control. Nye's argument is that most deviant behavior is the result of insufficient social control. In the 1950s, Nye conducted formal interviews with 780 juveniles in Washington state. As a note, his sample was criticized for not selecting urban youths and for only selecting individuals who were likely to describe their families unfavorably. And that's going to become important in a minute <laughs> because Nye focused on the family unit as a source of control. So selecting youths with negative views of their family probably influenced his results. Nevertheless, Nye discovered some pretty cool stuff. He discovered that youth may be directly controlled through constraints imposed by parents, through limits on the opportunity for delinquency, or through parental rewards and punishments. Youth may also be constrained when they are free from direct control because they anticipate parental disapproval or through the development of a conscience and an internal constraint on behavior. So although Nye focused on youth, 
I encourage you to think about how these various types of control work in your life as an adult. So Nye outlined three basic types of control, direct control, indirect control, and internal control. He did discuss a fourth mechanism that we need a reason not to engage in deviant behavior. So we need some alternative and positively sanctioned means to satisfy our desires. But that last point is better articulated in the next theory we'll discuss, so I'm not going to focus on that one. So direct control. Direct control is the use of punishments and rewards to incentivize particular behaviors. Punishment, disapproval, ridicule, ostracism, or banishment are all used by informal groups or society as a whole to control deviant behavior. People in authority, such as police officers, probation officers, judges, or correctional officials, use formal sanction, that is punishment, as a method of direct control. Our friends, family, and even strangers use informal sanctions, such as disapproval and ridicule, to control our behavior and let us know that what we're doing is not okay. If you've ever tried a norm-breaking exercise from intro to sociology or intro to psych, you've experienced this kind of direct control. I regularly ask students to break very minor norms like entering an elevator and not turning to face the doors or wearing shoes on your hands or sitting too close to a stranger just to see what the reaction is. And all those dirty looks and heavy sighs and uncomfortable body language are informal sanctions aimed at getting us to stop doing what we're doing. Even the reward I give students by way of a grade for that assignment is an example of direct control. Without the assignment and grade, I really doubt my students would have done the ridiculous things that I suggested for that exercise. Okay, so next is indirect control. This is the affectionate identification with individuals who adhere to social norms. This is really about the influence of our primary caretakers. Not only do parents and other primary caretakers teach children about norms and values that they hope the children will internalize and act on without direction, that's the next control we're going to cover, parents and caretakers show disapproval of their children's behavior. If the child cares about their parents' approval or disapproval, the child will be less likely to engage in activities the parent disapproves of. So my child, even to this day, is more worried about when I say I am disappointed than when I am outright angry. That is an indirect control. When we try to avoid disappointing our parents or primary caregivers, we are engaging in indirect control. So when we're about to do something dodgy and we think about the look on our mom's face and stop ourselves from doing that dodgy thing, we are experiencing indirect control. Okay, so next is internal control. This is the manipulation of an individual's conscience or sense of guilt to encourage conformity. Internalized control comes from our own efforts to prevent ourselves from engaging in deviant behavior. Throughout our life, many social institutions, the family, the government, our workplace, our schools, teach us the norms and rules of our society. If we genuinely internalize these rules and act on them ourselves, there is no need for any external control. We'll, we'll all just do the right thing according to the norms of our society. That makes this method the most powerful form of social control. However, this kind of internalized control is never completely effective. As we all know, there are a variety of different norms in society. Some of those expectations for behavior contradict themselves. For example, is a single parent supposed to spend all their time nurturing their child? Or are they supposed to leave their child in someone else's care so they can work? Both nurturing children and working are expected of single parents. And many of us are involved in different subcultures, which teach us norms that are different from or even contradict the norms of the larger society. And of course, if you get a group of people together and ask them what the quote unquote right thing to do is in a particular situation, 
you'll get as many different answers as people in the group. All right, so there you go. That's all the different forms. Well, probably not all the different forms, but lots of different forms of control. 